Okay, uh, so insyaAllah hari ni uh, Eh, dengar clear kan? Ke ada So hari ni kita akan ada session uh, Patutnya backside teaching kan ni? Dia uh, okay. tak apa Okay, so tak apa uh, So today uh, Basically more to Macam backside teaching je lah, backside teaching Tapi yang ber, yang virtual dia backside teaching kan? So, saya repeat the ILOs. So, the learning, ob learning objective of today are first, how to differentiate synotic versus asynotic heart disease based on history, PE and also generally lah. And then second, how to differentiate between ductal dependent and non-ductal dependent and third, management of hypersynotic spell. Number four, scars for different heart operation and number five is important syndrome associated with heart disease. Okay, uh, okay. <coughs> so, uh, kita boleh start kan? Semua dah ada kan? Dah, dah ada dah. Okay, jom. Uh, okay. Uh, slides. Okay. So you guys boleh present kot. Okay. So uh, how how we are going to run run the session today is, uh, you guys going to present. Okay. You guys going to present, and then uh, I will add on lah, add on a bit, and we can discuss. Any question you can always ask the presenter and also myself. Uh, and then uh. We can go about it, how to go about it, nanti kita tengok lah. Uh, while running the session, nanti kita, kita add lah apa-apa. Okay, so presentation ni, saya, 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 saya tekan eh? Uh, saya, saya boleh je prepare uh, Dr. Okay, saya okay. 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 Uh, okay. Prepare and then awak control lah the thing ni. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. boleh start lah. Alright, saya buka kejap eh. Korang okay. uh, nampak eh? Nampak je. Nampak eh? Nampak, nampak. Hmm. Ketak. Ketak. Okay, uh, so yeah, so this is the presentation. Uh, I will pass to the first presenter. Oh, okay. First presenter, Zira. Yes. Okay, so this is. Peticulation by uh, Azila. Okay. Okay, so boleh pergi sana, Azila. Azila, Azila. Kuat sikit, cuba kuat sikit. Kuat sikit, Azila. Ah, okay. Okay, minta semua semua uh, apa? Uh, silent mic, uh, off mic no. Sebentar lagi nak present kita off mic. Siapa yang ada question boleh tanya. Okay. Tanya aja kau. Okay. Um. Okay. So aja cuba explain the the fetal secretion. Yeah. 
Assalamualaikum. Can you hear me? Saja, ah uh, dia putus-putus saja. My name is Hadira and I'm okay. the SSH to provide the gadget exchange. Itu saja. Jap saya tukar pakai telefon lah. Ah oh, okey okey. Okay, eh boleh ni sebentar tu saya dulu jap. Try. Hello. Okay. Okay dah. Okay, good, good. Hello, dengar tak? Dengar, dengar. Ya. Yeah. Ah, dengar. Ya, siap boleh pergi. Ya, siap boleh pergi sana. Hello. Okay. Ah, uh, ah, uh, start from the beginning again. Uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So today I'll present about the fetal circulation. First, uh, we have to know about the differences between the fetal circulation and also the newborn or adult circulation. Um, so in fetus, instead of the lungs, the placenta uh, plays the role uh, for the gas exchange and also for the uh, nutrients uh, for the nutrients to the fetus uh, so uh, the lungs do not provide the gas exchange so, uh, the pulmonary vessels will be vasoconstricted and uh, diverting the blood away from the pulmonary circulation so the placenta is the is the most important part like, in playing the role in gas exchange uh, so there are three cardiovascular structures uh, in the fetus, unique to the fetus, in which they are ductus venosus, um, foramen ovale, and also ductus uh, atriosus. These three structures act as shunts, in which um, they will divert the blood and um, bypass the lungs and the liver. Okay, uh, so. Uh, the placenta is not as efficient as the lungs uh, in the as, in functioning as the gas exchange organ. Okay, uh, so the PO2 from the umbilical vein, which is um, umbilical vein, will bring the oxygenated blood from the placenta to the uh, to the fetus, right? So uh, the PO2 in the umbilical vein is around 30 to 35 millimeter mercury only. Uh, so, why it is called umbilical vein? Even though it brings the um, uh, oxygenated blood, right? So, why, why it is called vein? Because uh, everything that goes into the heart is called vein. And everything that comes out from the heart is called artery. So, umbilical vein brings the oxygenated blood to the heart, right? So, uh, it is called umbilical vein. Uh, so, 50% of the umbilical venous blood 
will enter the hepatic circulation and the rest of the blood will bypass the liver via the ductus venosus to the inferior vena cava. So the inferior vena cava uh, brings the poorly oxygenated blood from the lower limb. So uh, then the blood, the poorly oxygenated blood will mix with the blood from the umbilical vein via the ductus venosus, right? So the, the, at this point of time, uh, when it is combined, the PO2 is only around 20, 20, 26 to 28 millimeter mercury. So uh, this combined blood from the inferior vena cava will go, will go into the right atrium. And then in the right atrium, it will pass through the foramen ovale to the left atrium instead of going to the right ventricle. Why? Because uh, in the right atrial, in inferior vena cava junction, uh, there is um, a, a, a flap of tissue. We call it as um, eustachian valve. Okay, this eustachian valve um, makes the blood from the right atrium, uh, from the inferior vena cava, go straight to the foramen ovale to the left atrium. So uh, the, the blood in the left atrium will go through the mitral valve to the left ventricle and the left ventricular blood will go, will be ejected to the ascending iota. And then in the ascending iota, the blood will, will be supplied to the brain and also the upper part of the fetal body. Okay, um, after the blood circulating in the brain and also the upper part of the fetal body, it will come back to the superior vena cava. So after it supplies all the upper part of the fetal body and also the brain. So the blood will be less oxygenated, right? Uh, so um, the PO2 at this point of time is around 12 to 14 millimeter mercury. So the less oxygenated blood in the superior vena cava will then enter the right atrium and it will preferentially flows across the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle. Rather than going to the foramen ovale, it will cross the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle. And then from the right ventricle, it will be ejected to the pulmonary artery. Okay. In the pulmonary artery, uh, only 5% will be <coughs> will flow into the lungs. Why? Because the pulmonary circulation, just now I mentioned that it is very so constant Vesoconstricted, right? So uh, only 5% will go into the lung, and the, the major of it will go into via the ductus atriosus into the descending iota. And then uh, from the ascending, this descending iota, it will supply the lower part of the body, and also some of it will go to the, will go to the two umbilical arteries into the placenta. And then in the placenta, the carbon dioxide and waste products uh, will be released to the maternal circulation. So can you understand what I have explained just now? Yes. Yes, yes. Good, good. Very good. Okay, everyone Sorry. here about the explanation. I couldn't see. <laughs> Anyone got any question before I start to ask? Okay, good explanation by Hazira just now she mentioned that uh, after the shunting from the uh, right atrium into the left atrium via the overlay and then into the left ventricle and then into the systemic circulation that I, my question would be that why does it circulate into the upper part of the body first uh, I mean I thought that as long as it passed through into the aortic arch it can go both upper and also lower Hazira? Um, as uh, as far as I read from the Nelson, the it says that the upper part of the body is mainly supplied by the left ventricle, meaning that um from the ascending iota, and then it will supply the upper part of the body and also the brain, and then from the right ventricle, it will supply the lower part of the body, meaning that from the 
right ventricle and then to this descending aorta via the ductus sutriosus, then it will supply the lower part of the body. But I'm not sure why. It's, 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 it's actually just the preference of the blood flow. Because if you look at the diagram, uh, uh, actually not all the blood from the inferior vena cava will pass through formant ovale to the, to the, I mean, to the, uh, I mean, go up, so go up to the, through the ascending outer. Because some of it will actually go down through the, uh, into the right ventricle. But most proportion of it will go through the permanent ovale. Similar to the superior vena cava. So blood from superior vena cava, not all will actually go to, uh, through the tricuspid valve. Uh, through the uh, yeah, tricuspid valve down to the right ventricle because some of it will actually go into the formant of valley as well. But mainly, predominantly, will go will go down to right ventricle from super super vena cava will go down to right ventricle and from super vena cava will go to the uh outer will go to the left side and go to the outer similar to the blood from the outer blood from the formant blood from the from the right ventricle only 5% go to the lung and the rest uh, yes. go to the left side uh, the left go to the left side through the doctor's uh, addresses and but yes. about 5% akan pergi kat lung so but mm. predominantly akan supply the lower limb uh, via the doctor's addresses yeah, from. so in general uh, the two non-functioning organ uh, or less functioning organ uh, in fetal circulation is liver so lung. Okay. Because these two roles are played by the placenta. So that's why liver and fetal circulation are not well developed in fetus. Okay. It will develop after the venous, venous the ductus venous uh, constricted and, of, and also after the ductus addresses constricted. Okay. Okay, this is mainly because of the pressure. Lah. Because in fetal circulation, the pressure in the lung, intravascular pressure in the lung, intrapulmonary pressure, and also intravascular pressure in the lung is very high because lung is collapsed. Okay, the lung is collapsed, so do the vessels in the lung. So the pressure is high, that's why uh, blood pre prefer to go up instead of to go to the lung circulation through the uh, ascending outer and goes up to the branches, uh, branches of the outer, and also so do the portal circulation is very high, high pressure, high resistance. So most of the blood will go through the ductus venosus instead of entering the portal circulation. Okay, can from when? Okay, any any more question? Thank you, Doctor. So, the second slide. Uh, Doctor, uh, I would like to ask. Just huh. now, um. Azira mentioned some uh, about a structure that that uh, affects the blood flow, whether the blood flow goes to the foramen ovale or to the right ventricle, which is, I think, eustachian flap. Um, eustachian valve. Eustachian valve. Is it the same as crista dividends or is it something different? Hmm. Mm, I'm not sure about that. Sorry. I'm not sure about crystal dividends as well. What is crystal dividends? There are the, I, I read macam dari nursing something about um, it divides the the flow for the foramen ovale and the right ventricle but I'm not that sure. Okay, let me see eh, crystal dividend. Um, I think it's the same. The same? Mm -hmm. It's, it's the same. It's, it's the same. It's actually a crystal dividend. It's a. It's like it. it works like a valve, lah. Valve to make sure the flow is actually one way to the into the permanent ovale. Oh, okay. Thank you, doctor. Uh, and this this valve actually and this valve eustachian valve of crystal uh crystal eh? what we call it dividends. Eh? Uh, it's actually later on. Okay, it will become the right atrial appendage. Okay, mm -hmm. the tissue will will remain there, will remain there. Uh, however, the permanent ovale will close now, will close. Uh, but the the tissue will remain there, 
and that is how when we when doing echo you have to identify the structure to determine mm. the right which one is the right atrium remember when you do the definition of right atrium left atrium <coughs> uh, or right ventricle left ventricle is not depending on the position now it's depending depending on the structure and anatomical so mm. right atrium can be at the left side but it's still the right atrium so, so do left ventricle it can be on the left side yeah on the right side but it's still anatomically and structurally it is a left atrium so we define atrium left or right it's not based on the position it's based on the anatomical and structure come up that's why that's that's why we've got tga can tga tga because it's transposition of great arteries <coughs> You also got CCTGA, ataupun uh, the previous name was called uh, LTGA. TGA ada dua, so you've got DTGA or LTG and LTGA, ataupun TGA and CCTGA. CCTGA is correct, uh, congenitally corrected TGA, which mean which mean it is a TGA. The great arteries are transposed, but so do the ve the ventricle. The ventricle also transposed to each other, so the left ventricle move to the right side. So the right side move to the left side. So the net effect is become normal lah. The heart looks normal. I mean the left side, the left ventricle will supply the outer. The right ventricle will supply the uh, the pulmonary artery. Faham tak? Tapi when you look at the heart, I mean from just look at the diagram, you will see oh this is left ventricle, this is right ventricle. But the function is different lah. You have to determine because the 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 label the labeling of left and right ventricle is not by the the position is actually by the anatomical and function and also structure of the hmm. so it's important to recognize the appendage right atrium appendage to determine where is the location of the atrium whether the atrium is right this is right atrium or this is left atrium because a lot of case especially in complex not a lot lah there's some rare really case of complex sinotic heart disease or complex heart disease where there's there is a transposition of the atrium and a transposition of the left atrium left ventricle uh, of the left ventricle so which means the right atrium is actually at the left the left is actually at the right macam dextrocardia lah dextrocardia okay dextrocardia if you look at dextrocardia they put for two atrium to ventricle as well but the left ventricle is actually is actually at the right side and the and vice versa if I went. Yes, sir. Okay, got any, any more questions? Yeah? Thank you, sir. <coughs> okay, we can move to the next slide. Okay, next slide, please. Thank you, sir. <coughs> okay. Oh, this is a good one. Okay. Okay, please study with me. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Yeah. Um, sorry, I'm a bit confused. Okay. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Muhammad Jazli. Uh, I'll be presenting about the fetal adaptation for uh, fetal circulation adaptation when it comes when it becomes a newborn. Okay. As my uh, colleague have explained just now regarding the fetal circulation. We know that it starts before birth. Um, the pathway is mainly from the placenta to the umbilical vein, and we know that most, if not all, of the uh, blood from the umbilical vein will go through the ductus venosus. As it goes through the ductus venosus, as you can see, the color here, the color also signifies the uh, oxygen concentration. You can see highly oxygenated blood. It later it mix with the uh, less with uh, this deoxygenated blood. So there's a mixing of both. That's why it becomes a bit diluted, <coughs> and it empties into the right atrium. So it flows here through the ductus venosus because um, they will face resistance at um, in the hepatic circulation, as mentioned previously by Hazira. And then it empties into the right atrium. As it empties, it empties into the right atrium, this one is 
in uh, fetal punya circulation lagi eh. As it empties into the right atrium, about one third of the blood flow uh, will go through the foramen ovale, whereas two third of the will go into the right ventricle, um, which accounts about 65% of the volume, of the blood volume. It enters the right ventricle. So as it goes, uh, we will follow through the pathway from the right ventricle. Yeah. So from the right ventricle, it will pump, as mentioned previously, and then it will go through the pulmonary artery. So I would like first to stress about the pulmonary artery. So uh, as mentioned, as the doctor mentioned previously, that in the pulmonary vas vasculature, there is a uh, high resistance. Why does that happen? Because as you can see here, during the fetal, uh, during the fetal period, there is a lot of fluid inside the alveolus. When there is a lot of fluid inside the alveolus, there is a uh, high, uh, low oxygen concentration, which result to a vessel constriction. This um, reaction, this uh, reflex, is called hypoxic pulmonary vessel constriction. Okay, hypoxic pulmonary vessel constriction. Why does that happen? Okay, from my understanding, why does that happen? The main, the main reason what they want to do, um, what the body wants to achieve is to get the best oxygenation for each of the red blood cell. So to make that happen, because uh, it's, you already have limited number of oxygen, so you want to make as little as uh, possible of red blood cell flow so that you can get a lot of oxygenation per red blood cell. Because let's imagine if we have limited oxygen and then uh, there's a lot of blood flow, there will be a lot of uh, red blood cell that's unable to be oxygenated. Is it, is it um, do you guys understand? Yes. Some, Ah, uh, okay. So, uh, is yes, sir. Ah, uh, other people, the the rest, you guys understand kan? It's a very important concept. Cause later we will uh learn about TPHN, I mean persistent pulmonary hypertension in newborn. So this is very very important concept. Understand kan? Semua. Okay. Okay. Alright, so this is this cause manari. This cause the vessel constriction. So, but when there is normal alveolus, uh, let, later on I will explain the differences. So this one is during <coughs> the fetal period. Eh? Okay. Mm. So because of that. Uh, sorry, Jess. Yeah. I would like to ask. Uh, um, uh, why why there is a hypoxic alveolus just now? I I think I just uh, lepas. Why why? Uh, hi. Why hypoxic alveolus tadi? Dia hypoxic because um, during the fetal period, there's a lot of fluid inside the alveolus. Uh, because uh, the, the alveolus, uh, the fluid still retain inside the alveolus. But later on when it achieve newborn period, there will be changes lah, which I will explain later on. Okay. So, because of this concept, there's a lot of high pressure um, pulmonary vasculature. So it makes uh, very difficult for blood flow to enter to the pulmonary vasculature. Hence, only about uh, 8 to 10%, based on answer, uh, 8, uh, 8 to 10% enters, um, enters the pulmonary vasculature. But more than 80 to 90% will bypass the pulmonary vasculature in, through the ductus arteriosus. So, uh, as you can see, macam nak, actually, in a fetal circulation, there's only two ductus here. One ductus venosus, which is from the uh, going to the heart, ductus arteriosus going away from the heart. So, in the ductus arteriosus, about 80 to 90 percent blood flow when compared to the blood flow to the pulmonary vasculature, which is about uh, 8 to 10 percent. So, as it goes through, the aorta and then it goes, uh, it supplies the whole body. And as it supplies the whole body, it later go back through the umbilical arteries 
uh, to remove the the waste and re-oxygenate back for fetal circulation. So that's the main concept. So we settled about the, the flow from the right ventricle. From the flow for the prominent ovale is rather similar. You go for the one third of flow from the right atrium, go to the prominent ovale, letters go into the left ventricle and it's pumped. But most of it still from the ductus arteriosus. Lah. Okay, so that's fetal circulation. Now <coughs> let's uh, focus on what happens after the uh, newborn. So once uh, when there's birth, there's a lot of changes that we have to take into account. But the key points here that we need to take into account is the changes that happens at the ductus venosus, ductus arteriosus, at the foramen ovale, and at the uh, umbilical veins and artery. So as the child is being born, there is uh, the key uh, the key change happens when there is clamping. Okay, why 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 is, is that a key a key feature? Because once if there is clamping, you actually you reverse the whole circulation. In a sense, you reverse the whole uh, pressure gradient. Previously, during the fetal circulation. The pressure gradient here is rather low, which facilitates blood flow, whereas at the pulmonary vas vasculature is high, which makes uh, blood to <coughs> to go through the ductus flow instead. But when you do clamp clamping, what happen is that you increase the um, you increase the pressure. It's like you do an extreme measure of vasoconstriction. You clamp. Because of the clamping, okay, because of the clamping, uh, there will be minimal flow from the umbilical vein, so it is reduced. Uh, reduce minimal flow to umbilical vein and it later flow through the IVC, IVC, uh, IVC. So as, as the blood flow is reduced, uh, it affects oxygenation. So focusing on the ductus venosus first, as there is a re reduction in blood flow, there's, there is a cause of lower oxygenation and lower supply of prostaglandin from the placenta. As the placenta is cut off or its uh, flow is limited by the clamping, so there is a reduction in, there is a reduced uh, oxygenation. Okay. Uh, basically, the prostaglandin makes the uh, ductus patent. So as the umbilical, the, the placenta is removed from the circulation, so it makes the ductus venosus uh, less patent. So they, they will tend to fibrose and close, which cause uh, blood flow to go through the portal vein instead. And as it goes into the circulation and into the right atrium, uh, as mentioned previously, as you can see here, as, as it goes and there's a crystal dividends which divides into the left atrium <coughs> and through the right atrium you can see it goes into the foramen ovale and but most of it will go into the pulmonary vasculature so let's focus on the pulmonary vasculature so the second most uh, important change is the change of from a very high um, high pressure in the pulmonary vasculature into low pressure how does it happen so when the fetal circulation, once the fetal start to to take the first breath of air, which you don't need much, you just need about a five to ten uh, milli um, water pressure of uh, oxygenation to make the alveolus uh, patent and open. So once that when once that happen, it causes vasodilation based on the principle have, that have been mentioned previously because there's increased oxygenation. So there is no hypoxemic uh, pulmonary uh, vasoconstriction, so it's vasodilated. As it's vasodilated, there will be reduced in pressure. Due to the reduced in pressure, so because it's reduced in pressure, the flow will be easier, will be uh, for flow of the pulmonary artery. So the pulmonary artery tends to flow easier. As it flows easier, it can it, it enters the, the lung more compared to the flow to through the ductus atriosus. Okay. As it flows more <coughs> there, 
um, the ductus arteriosus also is reduced uh, reduced uh, in patency because of the cut uh, because it is uh, the source of prostaglandin is is cut off and because of the higher oxygenation so the higher oxygenation causes the um, ductus arteriosus to to uh, to close lah okay mana tadi so um, so any close more blood flow as there's more blood flow to the pulmonary artery there will be more blood flow to the pulmonary vein as there will be more blood flow to the pulmonary vein into the uh, left atrium, it causes higher pressure. Due to the higher pressure from the left atrium, it will push the foramen ovale to the uh, close, to close. Because of the higher pressure at the left atrium, when compared to the pressure to the right atrium. This does not happen prior to, uh, prior to given, being, being born. Lah. Okay. So that's the changes and then the blood flow goes through the umbilical arteries and it returns uh, into the uh, circulation. So on top of that, Allah. On top of that, um, okay, so uh, that's the main changes we can see. So overall, what happened du during this process, the ductus will close due to the cut off from the prostaglandin. And then uh, of cut, uh, cut off prostaglandin source from the placenta. And then the uh, flow would increase to the lung and the ovale would be closed. So in certain cases, pathological, uh, pathological issues with uh, fetal uh, adaptation to newborn, which is mainly one is transient tachypneic of newborn. And how does that happen? It happens because there is not enough of the fluid is being extravated outside, meaning after newborn, supposedly you would have a normal alveolus. But in a transient tachypneic of newborn, there is not enough of the fluid from the alveolus going up. So there will be some retainment of the fluid inside the alveolus, which cause the transient um, tachypnea of the newborn. Apart from that, there is also other um, pathology which is associated with prematurity, which is called uh, persistent pulmonary hypertension of newborn, which is uh, a result of a persistent increase in pulmonary, uh, pulmonary vasculature because of extensive hypoxemia, acidosis, among others, uh, among other factors that can cause a persistent um, increase in pulmonary vasculature. Okay, uh, I think that's it. Oh, and last point we can add is that some uh, in ductus atriosus, functionally it closes within one day roughly, but in anatomically for it to permanently close it takes about one week because you will need time for all the fibrosis to happen all the uh, fibrosis to permanently close the ductus atriosus but functionally it closes about one day period okay i think that's all good good good, good. any question you guys want to ask uh, I'm sorry, Leslie. I was quite unclear earlier. Uh, what caused the left atrial pressure to increase and close the foramen ovale? Okay, so the uh, good question. So the the issue is because prior, uh, in fetal circulation, there is minimal blood flow to the pulmonary circulation. Mentioned it was about eight to ten percent based on Nelson, but when the baby is born, there is a vas extensive vasodilation, extensive vasodilation due to the uh, baby crying and uh, air entry into the alveolus and the fluid is extravated. That's vasodilation. So there is massive blood flow into the pulmonary artery. When there's massive blood flow to the pulmonary artery, there's mass, we can say relatively there's massive blood flow to the pulmonary vein. When there's massive blood flow to the pulmonary vein, there is increased a significant increase in uh, left atrium punya pressure. So when there's increase in the left atrium punya pressure, it will 
push the patent foramen ovale, the foramen ovale towards the right atrium because of the difference in pressure, which is the left atrium higher than the, than the right. So it pushes the ovale to close. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> so I want to highlight a few important things that will will be useful later lah in our like in our uh, series today. So one is uh, the role of prostaglandin. Okay, the prostaglandin is actually produced by the mother. Okay, mother will produce prostaglandin. And prostaglandin will be uh, will enter the fetal secretion through the placenta. Lah. Okay, the role of prostaglandin is to maintain the patency of the uh, ductus. To maintain the patency of the ductus atrocis and also uh, ductus venosus. <coughs> so when we clamp the uh, the umbilicus, so there is reduced uh, in the supply of prostaglandin. This is one of the contributing factors that actually uh, leads to the constriction of the ductus atrocis and also ductus venosus. Okay, uh, that's why in patient with ductal dependent lesion, we give them what is the treatment? Prostaglandin. Uh, we give PGE one. So we give prostaglandin. Okay. <clears throat> so prostaglandin has the ability to uh, to, uh, to dilate the vessels. Okay. Uh, itulah, yang itulah the, yang the rest I think just just covered uh, most of it. Any more question before we proceed to the next presentation? Okay, that's again. So next is Okay, next presentation guys. Hello, Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum doctor and my fellow friends. Uh, so my name is Zafira. Uh, actually just, um, my slide is actually have uh, eight pictures. Uh, oh, yeah. uh, I, got, uh, I do it as an animation. Okay, uh, I think okay, apa, apa, just uh, nanti saya just boleh uh, just ada uh, uh, you uh, can you take from the telegram okay the original one from me original one okay alright uh. okay uh. <coughs> Any stuff? Ah uh, yes, but you turn it to the uh, presentation slide uh, slide show. Ah uh, okay okay. Sebab muncul mention ada animation aku tak tahu kau punya ada ada animation. Okay, right. Oh sorry. Ah so, uh, yes. Jadi, okay. Uh, okay. So uh, assalamualaikum. Uh, so bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So I will present on the uh, cyanotic congenital heart disease. Uh, that's my what I have to find. So I will ask. Um, so what is cyanotic congenital heart disease? It is occurs when some of the systemic venous retents uh, cross the from the right side of the heart into the left side of the heart, and then goes into the aorta. It is called right to left shunt. So that's uh, for cyanotic congenital heart disease. Just a second. So the cyanotic congenital heart disease uh, can be divided into the two. In, can be divided to two, which is uh, decreased pulmonary blood flow, and then the second one is increased pulmonary blood flow. So the example of decreased pulmonary blood flow is the tetralogy of phallus, uh, pulmonary atresia, tricuspid atresia, transposition of pre-arteries. And the increased pulmonary blood flow 
uh, the example is uh, transposition of the archery, total animalist pulmonary venous return, truncus atrosis, atrosis and hypoplastic left heart syndrome. Uh, so why it is called decreased pulmonary blood flow? It is called because of uh, the blood flow from the heart into the pulmonary and uh, it is decreased. However, the increase uh, the vice versa. Lah. So next slide. So the first one, I will explain on the tetralogy of phthalate and the decreased pulmonary blood flow. So what is tetralogy of phthalate? So tetralogy of phthalate, you can, from the name itself, it is tetralogy. So there is a four cardinal features that we need to remember. Uh, which uh, first is the pulmonary stenosis, which uh, usually occurs as sub subvalvula or infadibular obstruction. And then the second one is a ventricular septal defect, usually large VST. And then the next one is overriding iota. And the last one is right ventricular hypertrophy. So this for continuous features is important to remember for the tetralogy of phthalate. So, um, hmm. so the overriding iota, uh, you can see from the pictures, uh, the overriding iota is mean by the iota is positioned over the ventricular septal defect itself. So the blood uh, mix there at the below the iota and goes into the iota. So the circulation is basically from the uh, superior vena cava and inferior vena cava enters the, into the right atrium and goes into the right ventricles. And some of the blood from the right ventricle it goes into the pulmonary artery. However, because of pulmonary stenosis, so there is less blood goes into the pulmonary artery. So uh, most of it uh, goes into the uh, uh, into the right, action into the left side of the heart. And then uh, because, and then uh, the blood, the blood from the pulmonaries, from the pulmonaries, really goes into the pulmonary veins and goes into the uh, left atrium, left ventricles, and then goes into the iota. And this goes into the iota is a mixing of the, uh, both uh, from the, the oxygenated blood and oxygenated blood from the vein. So the, usually the, uh, presentation of uh, your uh, tetralogy of phthalate is uh, later hmm. and the acute one is usually occurs um, with uh, cyanotic spells. So that's uh, for tetralogy of phthalate, the physiologically of the physiology of tetralogy of phthalate. So the next one, under the pulmonary blood flow, uh, next is uh, pulmonary atresia. So pulmonary atresia, it is uh, about where the pulmonary valve itself has been fused into the membranes. There was no pulmonary valve. So the blood from the right atrium and goes into the right ventricle. So it, the blood cannot go into the pulmonary artery because of the pulmonary valve is absent. So the blood uh, will regurgitate back from the left right ventricles into the right atrium, right atrium. and then that's why all of the blood from the uh, from the right vent from the right side of the heart it goes into the left side of the heart via the foramen ovale. So uh, at the well, at the left side of the heart, so they will be mixing of the deoxygenated blood and the uh, mixing of the oxygenated blood and deoxygenated blood. So, uh, where uh, where the patient get the oxygenated blood from this kind of uh, defect? So, the deoxygenated blood come from the patent ductus atrocer. Why? Because uh, the Left sided, uh, the blood flow from the left side, left side of the heart, we goes into the iota and then uh, there is a pattern that is atrocious there. So some of the blood will goes into the pulmonary artery and goes into the lungs and pulmonary veins and enter the, the oxygenated blood into the pulmonary arteries, eh, into the left atrium. And then there is mixing there. So that's why the this patient, uh, this uh, baby will get the cyanosis because of uh, because of the missing of the blood. Uh, 
so uh, so I, uh, the primary reaction site is actually I think is a part that to dependent of that to dependent congenital heart disease. So um, if there is no if there is no uh, doctor, there's no duct, uh, especially the PDA. So the baby will not stay, uh, the baby may die within first week of life. So that's it for the pump atresia. So next uh, is tricuspid atresia. So tricuspid atresia, from the word atresia, like I have mentioned before, this because atresia is uh, due to absence of the uh, valve itself. So this uh, this uh, from this picture, there is absence of tricuspid valve. So when there is absence of tricuspid valve, so the blood from blood flow from the right from the uh, superior superior and inferior vena cava we goes into the right atrium, and then goes uh, straight towards the left atrium, and then uh, the left atrium. So there will be mixing at the left atrium between the deoxygenated blood and the oxygenated blood. So the the blood from the left Atrium will go into the left ventricle, and then from blood from the left ventricle, we go both uh, into the aorta and the pulmonary artery. So the so some uh, some of the blood that came into the left atrium will be oxygenated, and then there will be mixing of the blood, mm, and then become the the baby become sinus lah. So um. That's why in this tricuspid atresia, uh, it is also doctor dependent because uh, especially at the actual level, we want the mixing of the uh, right atrium, uh, the blood from the right atrium and the left atrium. Mm -hmm. If there is no, um, no, uh, no, no connection between this, uh, this uh, uh, right sided and left sided, so. This patient also had uh, not inco incompatible with life lab. Hmm. So the hmm. so that's it for the tricuspid atresia. So next is TGA atau uh, transposition of great arteries. However, transposition of great arteries can be both either uh, decrease pulmonary blood flow or increase pulmonary blood flow. So, uh, uh, the TGA that under decreased pulmonary blood flow is when the pulmonary state, when the pulmonary, there is pum, evidence of pulmonary stenosis. Like I have said before, when there is pulmonary stenosis, so the less blood flow from the arteries into, uh, from the ventricles or from the heart into the pulmonary. So, what is, uh, so I will explain uh, first about the TGA, what is transposition of the arteries? Usually, in normal patient or in normal baby, Mm, the iota oh no, or the pulmonary artery will arise from the right ventricle and the iota will arise from the left ventricle. However, in this patient, we have a TGA. It is uh, opposed, whereby the iota is arise from the right ventricle and the pulmonary artery will arise from the left ventricle. So the blood flow from the right atrial and right atrial, which is the oxygenated blood, will go into the right ventricle and go straight into the iota without uh, without oxygenated, without oxygen, whereby from the blood flow from the pulmonary artery and goes into the pulmonary vein and left atrium, uh, which is oxygenated, will go back into the pulmonary artery. So there is much, uh, much no, not not a good circulation. However, this uh, uh not a good circulation lah. So that's why um. That's why they must be uh, for the patient to stay alive, to stay alive. So they may, uh, the baby or the heart must have a uh, uh, connection either in the ventricular sept, uh, ventric, ventric, ventricular septal defect or atri, uh, from the atrial part or ventricular part. So in this picture, the connection is between the uh, at the atrial level, whereby the blood from the left atrium mix with the blood, the oxygenated blood from the right atrium, and those blood will uh, mix into the right ventricle and goes into the iota. So uh, the blood 
uh, no, the blood that goes into aorta is more sinus, more sinus, sinus lah. Uh. And then goes into the uh, body. So this patient will come in with sinotic. Mm, sinotic, congenital heart disease, sinus. Mm. So he's also doctor dependent. And mm. so the next one, uh, so this is basically the principle of, uh, no, no, the physiology of the, the, uh, the transposition of the artery. So next, um, next is total anomalous pulmonary venous return. What is total anomalous pulmonary venous return? So you can see from this picture, <coughs> you can see from this picture, um, okay, you can see that uh, usually uh, in normal baby, the pulmonary vein is connected to the left atrium. However, in this patient with total anomalous pulmonary venous return, the pulmonary vein is connected not into the left atrium. It connected the I I do one either infra 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 uh, supra cardiac or infra cardiac. So this patient, uh, this picture is uh is about uh, the in supra cardiac because the supra cardiac is more common, the more common compared to infra cardiac. So the the in supra cardiac the pulmonary vein will be connected into the the chest, um, brachial left brachial vein. Like that. If the infracardiac, so we will uh, merge, um, connect with the ductus venosus or portal vein. So in this picture, it's a pulmonary uh, into the uh, cephal brachycephalic vein and goes into the super, uh, SBC. So the, the physiologically is the the blood flow from the superior and inferior vena cava. Uh, so the no no the pulmonary uh, the blood flow from the lungs goes into the pulmonary vein is the oxygenated one. So the oxygenated one will combine with the deoxygenated one into the right atrium. So, uh, there is mixing of the uh, both uh, blood in, into the right atrium. So um. So the blood uh. Mm, so, uh, from this picture, so the, uh, there must be um, uh, a defect over the, uh, uh, from this picture lah, there is a defect on the atrial level from the right atrium into the left atrium so that the mixing can go, the blood can go into the iota to supply the systemic, uh, to, supply, to supply the body tissues. And some of the blood will go also into the right ventricle and pulmonary artery to be oxygenated. So, however, the the return of the pulmonary venous, pulmonary, the return of the blood from the pulmonary vein, from the lungs uh, to the pulmonary vein is into the uh, into the right atrium lah. So they must be missing to make this. Uh, patient or this baby to stay alive. And then in your state mentioned that, that uh, usually the actual level communication is uh, macam important lah compared to ventricle. So that's for the tra, uh, apa, total anomalous pulmonary venous return. And then the next one is truncus atrocis. So what is truncus atrocis? It is uh, the, uh, the, the is combination, or I can say it's combination between the iota and pulmonary artery. From this picture, you can see um, both uh, the blood from the left ventricle and right ventricle goes, uh, both goes into the one, uh, one single trunk. And those trunk will be divided into iota and pulmonary artery. So, uh, that's why the this patient will uh, have sinus lah, so uh, will be sinus. So, and then oh, mm, I think that is for the truncus atrocis lah. And then the last one is the hypoplastic left heart syndrome. So the hypoplastic left heart syndrome, uh, it is 
Hai Jim. Uh, from this picture, the in definition is the failure of development of the uh, mitral or ayah tiba. However, in the in this picture, it's a, there is a big absence of the ayah tiba. So the blood from the left ventricle, which is oxygenated, cannot be cannot go into the ayah tiba to supply the system uh, to supply the body body tissue. So, um. So that's why the oxygenated blood from the left atrium will uh will go into because of high high pressure there. So we go into the right atrium and missing mix with the uh mix with the uh this oxygenated blood and both goes to the right ventricle and goes into pulmonary artery. So when uh so this uh hypopressive left atrium syndrome needs uh, some that uh, actually need some connection which is paternal test arthritis to make the blood flow into the iota. If no pulmonary uh, paternal test arthritis, so there's no blood can go into the iota. So no supply of the body, no supply of uh, oxygen into the body. So, uh, hmm. So, uh, what, uh, I forgot to mention. Uh, when will we, nah? when we uh, say this patient had uh, sinusitis? The sinusitis is present. Uh, present when there is uh, more than four gram per deciliter of the oxygenated blood. Uh, no, no, four gram of deciliter of hemoglobin in the oxygenated blood. Hmm. It's actually so, more than 3 grams, 3 or 4 grams on reference, more than 3 or 4 grams of per deciliter of hemoglobin that is deoxygenated. For example, for example, if my HP is 15, only from my HP is oxygenated, okay, the rest of the 3, the three, the other 3 grams is not oxygenated, then I'll be fine. So those, uh, yeah, uh, the, more, the more hemoglobin that is not oxygenated, yeah. then the more sinus will be. Okay, from then. Okay. okay, good question. Uh. This is a very lengthy one. Uh, got any question? And very, this is very important. Uh. This is the overview of sinusitis heart disease. Okay, the question. Uh. Um, with regards to the transpositions of uh, great artery, the yeah, my question would be with relation to the L, which is the congenitally corrected uh, TGA. Uh, my question would be that um, actually I'm confused because the, um, uh, Nelson mentioned that there will be some ECG changes, in particular the abnormal P wave, absence of Q wave in V6. Uh, ab not pathological Q wave in lab 3, AVR and AVF uh, and also an upright T wave across the precordium. My question would be that I cannot understand why this manifestation occur. Uh, the ECG changes, abnormal P wave, pathological Q wave uh, in lab 3, AV uh, AVR and AVF and then another one would be the upright T wave across the precordial lead. Uh, that's quite difficult. Can you show us the picture of the image of the <coughs> okay, look at the TGA. Eh? <laughs> okay, need TGA, yeah. Okay, so uh, first we have to understand. Okay, uh, in the TGA, there's two types. Uh, as you mentioned, right, ED and LTGA. Uh, LTGA now we call as CTGA. Uh, congenitally corrected, uh, corrected TGA. Okay, so in TGA, what happens is uh, the right ventricle is supplying the outer and the left ventricle is supplying the pulmonary artery. This is DTGA. This is the abnormal TGA, the original TGA. Uh, in your question, CT CTGA means the right and left also switch. The right ventricle and left ventricle is also switch. So what happened is the left ventricle will supply the outer, uh, uh, both switch. So what happened is 
This one is actually this is uh, okay. uh, congenitally corrected is actually this is for the job. One open. This one is CCDGA. Because I think this is this diagram is a bit weird. Huh? job because in TGA okay, okay, okay. because the diagram is okay, okay. okay um, so in uh in in general like in TGA and in TGA what happened is the right radical as I mentioned uh the, the, the determinants of right or left is based on the function and then and the of the ventricle hand so uh Right ventricle is a weak, has a weak muscle. Okay, remember, right ventricle has a weak muscle, and the function is actually just to pump blood to low uh, pressure pulmonary circulation. <coughs> so, right ventricle, the function is is weak because its only function is to pump blood to the low pressure pulmonary circulation. Okay. While the left, the left ventricle, its main function is actually to push blood against the high pressure systemic uh, circulation so it has a very strong muscle uh. your left ventricle has strong muscle that's why when you did echo in order to determine this is right or left ventricle you look at the muscle okay, you look at the muscle bulk the hypertrophy of the trophicity of the muscle and also look at the valve lah, mitral valve and also the tricuspid valve okay so what happened in uh, LCG? Jadi, saya tengok air dia tak gambar dia. Hmm, macam ni. Sekejap. Sekejap eh, tengah cek, cek gambar je. Kalau dia gambar, semua cek. Saya tidak tunjuk. Ah, uh, tapi lah, juga cari lah gambar. <laughs> Uh, you guys cari gambar in while 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 listening to what I'm what I'm speaking. Uh, Google yourself lah L L uh, C C T G A atau L T G A. So in C C T G A, okay, initially, uh, the T G A first the, the T G A is transposition of great arteries. Okay, in originally I mean in in fetal in fetal fetal circulation, actually the P A. Uh, even though it's rise rise from the right ventricle, kan? Tapi dia, dia macam ni. Dia pusing tau. So, look at this picture, kan? Look at this picture on the on the screen, kan? So, sepatutnya, the pulmonary artery, eh, pulmonary valve is under on the right side. So, the original, it originally, is it, it, is, uh, it is actually transposed. I mean, the, the PA is actually on top of your aorta. Oh, they're on top of iota so both if you look at from the from the front you will only see like one vessel because iota is actually at the back of the pulmonary artery but in transpos transposition of great arteries 
both become parallel. So that's why you see a widened mediastinum. Or not? In TGA, from X here, you'll see like widened mediastinum. Uh, you will see, sorry, sorry, you will see egg on the screen because, uh, because, uh, because the, the, from X here, because X here is AP, kan? AP. So we will see you will look you will see like the PA and AO is on the on one plane, tapi it's actually side by side, because the heart kan dia bukannya duduk, ada susah lah sini, the heart heart your heart is actually the turn a bit lah dia bukannya flat, because when you look at the X-ray when you look at the X-ray, the first the first the the top of the heart on the X-ray is actually the the what the RV kan dia bukannya nampak Kalau lah hat ni actually the kalau hat macam ni kan, then you should see RV and LV the same size kan. Tapi when you look at X-ray, the top of the hat is actually the RV. You cuma nampak RV je, sikit je LV you nampak from X-ray. Faham tak? Because hat ni the turn. So that's why you akan nampak the middle stem is small because the AO and PA looks like overlapping each other in TGA. Okay, so that that's explain. That's why you get the changes in ECG, from not? Because the ECG reflects the the movement of uh impulse from the SA nodes to LA nodes and then to the to the bundles of bundle of keys and protein fibers and then through the ventricles, then up to the and finally to vent to the ventricle lah. Yeah, to the flow of the impulse. But because of the anatomical changes, you will see the uh, the disruption of the flow. So the SA node will change position. Okay, that's why you will see the changes in the P wave. This is quite complicated. I need to draw actually. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, back to basic. Okay, what what is sinus rhythm? Okay, anyone know what is sinus rhythm? Okay, good. Okay, so the definition is, uh, mean sinus 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 rhythm is rhythm that is actually generated uh, originated from the SA nodes, kan? Okay, that's why we see and because SA nodes is actually at the atrium, so that's why we see P is upward uh, upward in all of the leads except for AVR, kan? In AVR, then they can downwards because. Because it's L is originate from the because of the position, then P will upright. If I'm not because the flow is actually yeah, I think you case now. You you have to imagine the nila the axis, right? The axis. Okay, so bila when when P A and O A is actually uh turn, and so do in L T G A, the R V and L V also switch. So you get all these changes because you've got changes in the flow of the impulse. Let's explain the ECG changes now. But that's why it's very detailed. I, I think I won't the ECG changes of uh, CCTGA. But they will definitely hit there. So number one. Number two is because LV is supposed to be very thick and very strong and it conduct a lot of impulse. Okay, That's why LV, impulse from LV, the QRS is very wide and very tall. Okay, from now. QRS, if it's originated from the LV, it, it is very wide and very tall. That's why if, if you see uh, left ventricle hypertrophy, you will see tall RN. Okay. Because it it uh, it reflects the amount of impulse from the LV. So just imagine your LV is a strong muscle, but after a while, it just pumps through the, to the circulation, to the pulmonary circulation. So after a while, it will become weakened from Kalau you ni kuat and you ada banyak muscle, tapi you tak angkat berat. Lama-lama what happen to your muscle? Dia akan weaken kan? Dia akan become less hypertrophic. Dia akan more hypertrophic. So, later on dia akan jadi weak. Okay, and you can develop heart failure. Okay. RV, RV on the other hand, is very weak muscle. Tapi dia kena push against systemic circulation. Yang very high resistance. So, uh, tapi dia tak boleh hypertrophic banyak because dia punya muscle, amount of muscle is not much. So lam lama dia akan fail. So the first, the first fail that occur in TGA if not corrected, 
Okay, most TGA they can live as long as they've got a shun. Okay, especially at atrial level atau PDA. If they got shun at atrial level, they can survive. But usually they will die of failure lah. Because the first thing happen is blood ventricle will become pain and cannot push any more blood to the systemic circulation. And later on, left ventricle also will become pain. Because it will become overload. Okay, faham kan? Faham, Dr. Uh, meaning, Dr. Uh. Kalau congenital corrected, um, in Nelson mentioned that most of it is associated with other defect, tapi kalau dia isolated sahaja pun, kita kena correct juga. Okay, in general, kan, TGA, if they are, if we call simple TGA, which means TGA without any septal defect, they cannot live. Okay. They will die. Okay, you need a immediate intervention, which is the bus lah, you need bus, BAS lah, balloon atroceptal tomy. So, you need to create an NASD lah, which you need to destroy the flap of the PFO. Because baby with TGA, if they got simple TGA without any shun, any shunting, okay, once the PFO close, they will die. So, you need to uh, do NGO and this, you need to dis destroy the flap of the PFO to create an ASD before you actually go to uh, the definite uh, surgery lah, which is the actual switch or rest tally lah. Okay, faham kan? Ah, faham, Thank you. is almost always associated with either PDA or ASD or VSD. Uh, but those with VSD, you still need PFO. You still need to do bus. Tapi those with ASD, they will asymptomatic. You, they will be sinus lah. After one, they will be sinus. But later on, if you did not correct the switch, if you not switch the blood vessels, they will become fail lah. They will fail, die of failure. You faham? Okay. Okay. Ada any other questions lah? So, okay, this is very important slide. Okay, ha. It's a problem soalan. Oh, uh, I would like to ask the question because uh, about, uh, I have uh, read, uh, there is a, uh, uh, macam decreased pulmonary blood flow and increased pulmonary blood flow. Under the decreased pulmonary blood flow, it is a mixing, obstruction, mixing, Patient with uh pump with obstruction is there is there any specific disease or uh, specific defect? Okay, uh, okay. In general, kan? In general, okay. In general, you you need to understand the pathology, the pathophysiology of sinusitis, kan? There's a few ways you can become sinus. Okay, first is when you've got uh obstruction at the right outflow. Okay, with means obstruction at the level of pulmonary artery and below. Okay, this is what we call the PS, critical PS, uh, TA, kan? PA, pulmonary, pulmonary atresia or critical PS, critical pulmonary stenosis or you've got tricuspid atresia or critical tricuspid uh, stenosis or TOF. Which means all this, they, send, they are sinus because not much blood goes to the lung. So if there's this restricted blood into the lung, that's what we call obstruction. Obstruction at the right ventricular outflow. So this this is what we call obstruction at the right ventricular outflow leads to reduce blood supply to the lung. Therefore, reduce blood return to the left ventricle. Oxygenated blood return to the ventricle is reduced. Therefore, reduce systemic circulation as well. Come not. So they will get less oxygen. Lah. Okay, that's one pathophysiology of sinusitis. Second is mixing. Okay, very typical mixing is truncus atriosus. Okay, when we got in truncus atriosus, both LV and RV outflow goes into a common common blood vessel. Can okay, later on distally baru dia spread into pulmonary artery and aorta. Tapi proximally they are belongs they are originated from a a great a single blood vessel. So there's a mixing. So truncus atriosus is a pure mixing. Okay, and it's not restricted. Uh, so they rarely develop, they can develop failure lah because now double volume goes to the, can go to the lung and also can go to the systemic. Okay, from. Okay, so, uh, so you have to understand uh, some, some, especially complex scientific heart, they've got mixture of both pathology. Okay, for example, like TAPPD. 
Okay, T eight fifty is the most complex lah. Huh? Yes, it's a single single defect. T eight fifty is a one of the most complex. Because what happened is, the blood return, okay, didn't doesn't goes to the left side. It goes back to the right side. Okay, that's the problem of T eight fifty is, the venous the blood from pulmonary is actually goes back to the right side. It doesn't goes back, it doesn't goes to the left side, it goes back to the right side. So oxygenated blood, uh, I mean deoxygenated blood will be oxygenated and then goes back to the right side to be oxygenated again without go to the circulation, uh, without going to the uh to the left side. So oh sorry, sorry, this is another pathology. Lah. So another one pathology is mixing, the other one is restricted blood to the uh, pulmonary circulation, and the other one is uh two separate circulation system uh this is the tga and also the tapvd same pet same pathophysiology which means the right side supplying the right side the left side supplying the left side or vice versa okay from when tapvd any uh so your question that you uh restricted uh so restricted means simple the restricted lung much like you mentioned just now you divided scientific heart into two reduce pulmonary blood flow and also increase pulmonary blood flow the one that reduces pulmonary blood flow means there's a restricted restricted blood to the to the lung, and those that increase pulmonary blood flow is when there's mixing, so double volume goes to the lung. So the difference, the important to, to recognize the difference is these two, the these two uh, groups will present differently. Okay, those with increased pulmonary blood flow they will present with failure. Those with reduced pulmonary blood flow, they won't become failed. So you cannot you cannot say, for example, if you got a patient who is cyanose and failure symptoms, breathlessness, hepatomegaly, tachycardic, tachypneic, uh, you cannot say this is TOF. Then you are wrong. Okay, TOF should not be in your differential because patient this patient is in failure. For example, you did a physical examination and not you confirm patient may in failure. Okay, ada hepatomegalis, and then tachypneic, tachycardic, ada gallop rhythm. So this is fail, pa patient is failure. And then on top of that, patient also cyanose. So you cannot put TOF in your diagnosis. Because TOF, they cannot develop failure symptoms. Okay. Except for some rare cases, which is quite atypical. But your level, you cannot say TOF. Okay, faham kan? So the restrictive, the scientific heart was restricted. Uh, blood supply to the to the pulmonary, you cannot say uh, they won't develop failure. So TA, PA, they will not become fail, but they will become severely cyanose and they die because of that. So TOF they develop to lah uh, uh that spell lah, hypersensitive spell. Okay good, okay and macam banyak kan? Any other? Okay, question? thank you, doctor. Okay, so go. Let's go to this. Uh, I don't think we can finish this. Tapi try lah. Sampai you guys penat. And or oh, I penat. Okay, next. next. Because I thought you just want to list down uh, the scientific and the scientific. Tapi because you want to go into detail and we go into detail now. Next one is factor dependent. Hmm. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good morning everyone. I am Akila Yunus and today I will be presenting on asianotic congenital heart disease. So asianotic congenital heart disease can be divided into three classification. The first one is left to right shine. Second is obstructive lesion and third is regurgitant lesion. So first we will go to the left to right shine. And first we will see uh, VST, ventricular septal defect. So VST is the most common congenital heart disease. It is more common in girls and the prevalence is about 25 to 30%. So by the name itself, ventricular septal defect, we know that there is defect in the ventricular septum due to the uh, malformation during the early gestation of development of the ventricular septum. So as you can see in this picture, 
uh, when there is defect in the ventricular septum, because the left ventricle has higher pressure than the right ventricle, then there will be left to right shine. So the oxygenated blood uh, from the left ventricle will enter to the right ventricle and cause mixing. However, uh, there is no apparent cyanosis in patient because the uh, oxygenated blood in the left ventricle is still preserved. And for VST, we can divide it into membranous type and also muscular type. Uh, the more common is membranous type, in which membranous type can be further divided into infracrystal and also supracrystal. And among these two, infracrystal is more common than supracrystal. However, uh, supracrystal, the location of the defect <clears throat> is actually close, close to the aortic valve. So therefore, in supracrystal VST, uh, it is more commonly associated with IoT insufficiency. So if you get patient who has supracrystal BST, uh, in the echo, we also have to look at the IoT valve function because it is commonly associated with IoT insufficiency. And then the second type of BST is the muscular type. The muscular type is relatively less common than the membranous type. However, it is, uh, as compared to membranous type, muscular type has higher chance of uh, spontaneous closure. And then the muscular type can be further divided, whether it is single or multiple, which is also called Swiss muscular VST. <clears throat> and as for the presentation, uh, it actually depends on the size of VST. We can say the VST is small if it is uh, about the size of IoT valve, which is less than 3 mm to 5 mm. And we can say it is a large, moderate to large VST uh, if the lesion size is as big as the IoT valve or even bigger than IoT valve. So it's about more than 5 mm or more than 1 cm. And as for the presentation, uh, they will usually come with failure symptoms because of the left to right shine, which cause increase in the pulmonary blood flow. So with increase in the pulmonary blood flow, so there will be increased uh, return of blood to the left atrium and also to the left ventricle, which then will cause changes in the left atrium and also left ventricle first, uh, which is left atrial dilatation more than hypertrophy because it is volume overload rather than pressure overload and then uh, with chronic increase in pulmonary circulation or uh, increase in pulmonary blood flow chronically uh, they can develop pulmonary hypertension which is then can cause asymmetric syndrome which cause the right right to left shine and then at that point of time only will patient has cyanosis mm -hmm. okay uh, the next one is ASD atrial defect also, through the name itself, you can know that the defect occurs in the atrial septum. And uh, AST uh, is less common than VST. It, cause, it occurs in about 6 to 8% of population of children. And it's, it is also more common in girls. And in AST, there are several types of AST. There are actually four types of AST. Uh, the most common is ostium secundum or we can also call a secondum ASD, in which the defect is in the deficiency of the foramen ovale. So uh, in ostium secundum or secundum ASD, at the area of foramen ovale, it is deficient. So when there's deficient, there will be left to right shunting, uh, left atrium to the right atrium, near shunting. Okay. And then the second type is called ostium primum or primum ASD. And in this ostium primum ASD, um, it is associated with uh, AVST, or we can also call as endocardial cushion defect. So uh, later I'll talk about AVST, but as general principle, AVST can be divided into partial or complete AVST. Uh, in partial AVST, uh, there is uh, partial AVST, kiranya, it is the same as uh, primum AST or ostium primum VD because in ostium primum AST, the defect is in the endocardial cushion and also atrial septum and also associated with aortic valve insufficiency. However, in complete AVST, there will also be addition of ventricular septum defect in addition to the atrial septum defect and also AV valve insufficiency. Okay. And uh, the third one, is a sinus venosus defect in which the defect will be at the area at the junction of entrance between superior vena cava or inferior vena cava into the right atrium the defect will be there at the junction and fourth is the coronary sinus defect in which the defect occurs at the coronary sinus and this is the most rare type of ASD. 
also uh, representation will be much similar with VSD because both we have left to right shine. However, uh, because the defect occurs in ASD, it is not as severe as that occurs in VSD. So patient will uh, usually be asymptomatic. However, in large defect, patient can be symptomatic and also may present uh, with failure symptoms. Okay. And among the physical signs which distinguish uh, ASD from others are that in ASD, there will be fixed splitting of S2 because of the defect in ASD, it causes equalization of pressure between the left atrium and also right atrium. So it causes fixed splitting, uh, which means the splitting of S2, which consists of aortic component A2 and also pulmonary component P2, it will be consistently widely split uh, during both inspiration and also expiration because of the equalization of pressure in the left atrium and also the right atrium. Okay. And next is uh, PDA. Uh, in patent ductus atriosis, uh, as has been mentioned by our colleague earlier, the ductus atriosis functionally should be closed within 13 to 15 hours or about 14 hours. Uh, and in some, it may persist up to 14 days. However, if it persists longer than that, uh, patient may be called patient may have patent ductus atriosis. So, uh, in patent ductus atriosis, uh, in the fetal circulation, the flow of blood in ductus atriosis is from right to left however uh, when patient is when patient is born when the baby is born uh, as after like after weeks or after one week or after weeks in which pulmonary vascular resistance start to decrease start to decrease uh, supposedly uh, the ductus atriosis is always close right but in patent ductus atriosis when this pulmonary vascular resistance close however there's still patency of the ductus atriosis so blood will flow from the iota uh, in its left to right shine into the pulmonary artery circulation and also cause increase in the pulmonary flow and also uh, it has similar presentation with VSD, ASD and also AVSD in which patient may come with failure symptom mm -hmm. okay uh with VSD, uh, the type of murmur will be uh, ejection systolic murmur at the left lower sternal edge. With ASD, the murmur will be pan systolic murmur at the left upper sternal edge. And with PDA, there will be continuous machinery murmur uh, based at the left infraclavicular area. And in all this left to right shunting, uh, on the chest X-ray, you can. Uh, it actually depends on the the ECG finding and also chest X-ray finding. It depends on the size of the lesion itself. With small lesion, uh, patient may have relatively normal chest X-ray and ECG. However, in larger lesion, uh, they may have signs of left ventricular hypertrophy or with uh, consistently high pulmonary blood flow. They may develop biventricular hypertrophy, also affecting the right ventricles itself. And also on the chest X-ray, uh, you can see cardiomegaly with large defect, and also you can see a plethoric lung fill due to the increased pulmonary blood flow. Okay, so that's about the left to right shine. Now we move on to the obstructive lesion. So, uh, why is the name obstructive lesion? Because there is obstruction in the blood flow. So first, we will talk about coarctation of iota. Uh, we we'll first talk about coarctation of iota, in which there is narrow wing. Uh, of the IOT arch, it can be from the IOT arch uh, down until the bifurcation up to the iliac artery. So therefore, we need a CT thorax to identify uh, where the, the narrowing ends are. Pre preoperative, uh, preoperative. In order for us to determine the intervention later, and this coarctation of iota uh, almost always occur juxta ductal. What does it mean by juxta ductal? It means that near the ductus atriosus. So it can occur either preductal or postductal. So in preductal coarctation of iota, or we can also call it as infantile coarctation of iota because it usually presents early in life in infancy. Uh, and in this preductal coarctation of iota, in preductal, it means that uh, the lesion occurs before the ductus atriosus. So uh, in this situation, a uh, patient usually present early and also it may be associated with arch hypoplasia. But uh, it may be associated with arch hypoplasia but not necessarily associated with arch hypoplasia. And in preductal, coarctation of iota, uh, as soon as the ductus atriosus normally close, so, uh, macam mana nak cakap? Uh, 
Okay, right after uh, right after the baby is born, uh, the pulmonary vascular resistance will start to reduce. And also, after some time, the ductus atriosus will close. Initially, before the ductus atriosus close, uh, patient can still have circulation into the systemic circulation via the pattern that well, via the patency of ductus atriosus. Huh. So, a uh, patient can still have blood supply towards the lower limb, you can see, uh, from the ductus atriosus itself. But however, as soon as the ductus atriosus start to obliterate normally, so patient will present with signs of obstructive shock. Huh. So, there will be hypotension and signs of shock, lah, basically. Um, so, uh, in this case, pre-ductal coarctation of iota, uh, we have to give immediate prostaglandin in order to maintain the patency of ductus atriosus so that the systemic circulation to the lower limb will be preserved. And the second one is post-ductal coarctation of iota. So, in post-ductal coarctation of iota, uh, the constriction or the narrowing occurs after the ductus atriosus. And in this type of patient, we also call it as adult type of coarctation of iota. Uh, they may be remain undiagnosed until they are in adult age. And the presentation at adult would be uh, they can have hypertension of the upper limb with a lower blood pressure over the lower limb. And also they may also have radio femoral delay due to reduced blood flow to the lower limb relatively. Uh, and in this coarctation of iota, the type of murmur we will hear is ejection systolic murmur, which usually radiates to the interscapular or infrascapular area. In the chest x-ray, usually uh, we will see normal chest x-ray, but sometimes uh, there may also be rib notching due to the development of multiple collaterals of the intercostal artery. Uh, and also, for the murmur in coarctation of iota, as I mentioned earlier, it is ejection systolic murmur because uh, during systole, there is obstruction towards the outflow tract uh, over the aortic arch. However, uh, if collateral vessels start to develop over the intercostal artery, we can also hear continuous murmur over throughout, throughout our chest, throughout the patient's chest because of the presence of these uh, collateral vessels of intercostal artery. And then next, obstructive lesion and pulmonary stenosis and also aortic stenosis. Uh, both will occur due to the failure of development of the leaflets of this valve. Usually uh, in pulmonary valve and also aortic valve, they will have three leaflets. But with failure of development of these three leaflets of the valve, they will have pulmonary stenosis and also aortic stenosis. <laughs> so a uh, patient will present with usually uh, like uh, failure symptoms, uh, they may have exertion and dyspnea and also easy fatigability. With aortic stenosis, they can also present with syncope. Mm -hmm. And the type of murmur that we will hear in pulmonary stenosis and also aortic stenosis uh, is ejection systolic murmur. And sometimes you'll also hear systolic ejection kick due to the uh, stenos valve, which is hard to open, we will hear the systolic ejection at that point of time. Okay. And next is rigid condition. Uh, so condition, I think we can skip because uh, it's we not common. Unless uh, it's acquired. Mm. Okay, in the rheumatic heart. If not, we won't see this. Okay. Mm. Okay. okay, actually, the most common uh, heart defect is bicuspid. Bicuspid valve. Uh, I think I think of that's the most common. Now, second is BFD, mm -hmm. but I think I think by by two years, I think I think both usually as you won't diagnose them. You won't diagnose them. Uh, okay, that's very good, very detailed and thorough. Uh, however, actually pulmonary stenosis, they rarely develop dyspnea. They won't get dyspnea mm -hmm. in pulmonary stenosis. In aortic stenosis, they do. Okay, mm -hmm. remember any lesion, obstructive lesion at the right side before the pulmonary is mm -hmm. protective of the lung. I mean, they, they will protect the lung so you won't get this near. Okay, mm -hmm. what, what, do you, what when, we, when we say failure symptoms, failure symptoms, what do you mean by fail? Uh, relatively reduced cardiac output. Okay, so relatively reduced, reduced cardiac, cardiac output compared to the metabolic demands. Okay, that's what we call it, shock. 
that that's 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 I mean that's when you say it's short lah. Tapi mm-hmm. when when someone is in failure, in uncontrolled failure, what they presented with? This nia kan, very mm-hmm. typical macam ada auto nia, this this nia. Eh, dia macam right right side. Okay, dia macam uh-huh. right side. This is where talking. When we say heart failure, it's actually the mid, the left side. Okay, congestive mm-hmm. heart failure baru both sides. Mm-hmm. Tapi kalau heart failure, even in pediatric heart failure, is mean uh, means left ventricular failure. Okay, mm-hmm. and the symptom is all the cardinal symptoms is actually the dyspnea, lah, dyspnea, uh, acute dyspnea, even in pediatric as well. So the reason is because there's a lot of blood in pulmonary circulation that cause them to drown. So uh, heart failure ni, the problem is because they are drowning, the lung is drowning of because of the blood. There's a lot of blood due to the left ventricle fail to pump out blood efficiently uh, to allow venous return from the pulmonary vein. Lah. Faham kan? So there's a congested of blood. So uh, any lesion of subdivision on the left side, including coagulation of the aorta, Autic stenosis can actually lead to, uh, can actually cause uh, failure symptoms. Huh? Okay. So do the VHD, PDA and also AVSD. Because in this lesion, there's, there's increase in blood flow to the lung. Okay. Not VHD kan? Left side pergi right side, shunt is left to right. So now, there's double volume through the PA in VHD. So do in PDA. Okay. So they've got failure symptoms. In autic stenosis, in autic stenosis also they've got failure symptoms because now we use blood flow from lung to heart. So do coagulation of the aorta. So they can get failure symptoms. By in pulmonary stenosis, they won't get failure symptoms. Uh, and ASD also they won't get failure symptoms because uh, in in the atrium the the pressure is low, so they just got the problem with volume. So it's not as bad as in PDA and uh, NVSD because PDA and NVSD mm-hmm. we are talking about uh, pressure gradient. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of blood with high pressure, uh, and, and I mean push towards the heart, uh, towards the lung. But in ASD, there's a lot of blood but low pressure, so it, it, it's not actually affecting the the lung much, lah. Okay, so in 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 ASD, we call it uh, relative pulmonary stenosis. The the that's why in ASD, the murmur is similar to pulmonary stenosis. Actually, it's very mm-hmm. difficult to differentiate pulmonary stenosis and also ASD. The site mm-hmm. of the murmur is similar. Uh, is is exactly the same except in ASD we've got the fixed splitting. Mm-hmm. Okay, remember? Eh? So whenever you heard uh, a murmur that is that you think is ASD, then your main differential diagnosis is pulmonary stenosis. Unless you can hear the fixed splitting, then definitely this, this is ASD. Lah. But it's very difficult to, to hear the fixed splitting when the, the child is tachycardic. Okay. So, because ASD is similar, the pathophysiology is similar to pulmonary stenosis. It's just a relative uh, pulmonary stenosis due to double volume blood. Uh, go through the PA. Ken, okay, ada, ada any more question? Mm, sure, Doctor. I would like to ask, uh, for example, in the pulmonary stenosis, like you mentioned earlier, hmm. uh, there will be reduced, relatively reduced blood flow towards the pulmonary circulation. So, hmm. less, less uh, blood will be oxygenated. So, wouldn't the deoxygenated blood contribute to the shortness of breath or deep snare in the patient? Because this near is only occur when there's a lot of blood in the lung. You won't get this near because for those with anemia, right? Mm-hmm. Anemia, they don't get tachypneic. They don't become tachypneic. Unless it's very, 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 very severe anemia that cause the heart to fail. Can okay. you have a very severe anemia that that's not treated, finally your heart because your heart, when you're anemic, your heart will become tachycardic, right? So, mm-hmm. push more blood mm-hmm. to the lung. But because you, if you did not treat, then finally your heart will become tired and it's fail. Mm-hmm. That's when you get failure symptoms in anemia. So, because of the blood currently cannot push out the blood 
uh, the heart cannot push out the blood from the left ventricle so mm. contested the lung but otherwise if not you won't get tachypnea mm. because tachypnea is actually because of the pulmonary congestion so in x-ray so x-ray simpler because if you got a heart disease okay you got some someone yang, yang you rasa this is a heart problem so you have to determine this is sinus or not sinus okay then look at the ecg and look at the x-ray okay if the x-ray is pletoric then you know the defect is actually on the left side mm -hmm. most of the time the defect is on the left side or the pathophysiology is increased blood flow to the lung Okay. So you have that's where that's how you narrow down your diagnosis now. So patient mm -hmm. is sinus, okay. For example, patient is sinus, and on top of that, the heart, the lung, the pituitary. Mm -hmm. Okay, mama, you tak tahu mama apa. So what what condition <laughs> sinus and pituitary lung? Oh, ni mesti truncus atriosus. Ataupun uh, the other possible is uh, TAPVD. Okay, TAPVD pun ah uh, TAPVD lah. Uh, ataupun mm. usually the PPD you tak jumpa lah because they die early most of them mm. tak memang gadget untuk ni ok uh, uh, macam tu lah so you punya differential uh, tak banyak TGA maybe kalau TGA underwent bus then you may see them alive lah uh, ok tapi kalau contoh you nampak x-ray patient sinus and then lung dia oligamic mm. then you can bet on TOF lah. TOF is the most common. Mm -hmm. uh, ni kan. Kalau you cakap TOF, you tak payah examine one patient ni. You tengok je. Nampak patient sinus. You tengok X-ray, uh, oligamic TOF lah. You can just say TOF, no one will blame you. Because TOF is very common and it's top of the list. Because not many sinotic heart uh, was that presentation lah. Ada, the, the, the other option is uh, so yeah, the need is uh, Epstein, you can get Epstein uh, Epstein <laughs> also you get uh, very oligamic lung Tapi Epstein, you tengok X-ray, you will tell Epstein Epstein is very easy to diagnose And you will never see Epstein Because they either died Okay, because Epstein you cannot fix So they either died at day 1, 2, 3 of life Or you never know they go Epstein until you do extreme. A lot of Epstein the extreme now. Either they mati or to they died at very young age. Ataupun umur tujuh lima puluh tahun buat extreme. Eh Epstein no mini. Okay, mm. They won't be detected. Those young mild Epstein won't be detected. Usually accidentally detected by extreme. But those young Epstein very bad Epstein they can mati very early now. Oh you you didn't mention about Epstein no mini kan? So uh, Epstein uh, just arterialization of left, left of right ventricle, which means the the setting of the of the tracheal valve uh, become lowered. So okay. maksud tracheal valve ni dia rendah. Uh, so dia punya right ventricle tu become smaller, become very small, and right atrium become very big. Uh, so they become sinus because reduced blood circulation to the pulmonary. So, but they want Epstein is rare, tak lah rare sangat, is rare because I, a lot of them are diagnosed mm -hmm. and a lot of them die very early so you won't see them Occasionally you see them lah, tapi rare lah Okay, next, next Ada soalan? Because in general, asynotic is more common than sinotic and sinotic you will usually, kalau sinotic you tahu TOF your F you have to know in out lah because it's very common. Definitely will come out in your exam lah. Kalau you get a scientific heart, just bet this is your F. You, without examination, without anything, just check out your F. Then test untuk you betul is about eighty percent. Okay, next. Kasten dip. Then he actually dah mention tadi. Tapi okay lah. Just briefly, just briefly describe. Okay. Uh, so Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh So my name is Muhammad Aklan uh, InsyaAllah I will be presenting a bit about the doctor dependent edition So uh, my main sources will be from Nelson Essential and also Nelson Textbook of Pediatric So um, if you go into the textbook, there is no specific topic that 
uh, combines and correlates all this uh, into a one single topic, but rather it is dispersed into uh, respective topics. So uh, this one is the comp uh, what I've compiled from uh, each pathology. So ductal dependent lesion, as the name suggests, uh, meaning that the lesion is actually dependent on the uh, uh, ductal patency in order to maintain uh, vi fetal viability. So in other words, either you need that shunt to uh, give pulmonary blood flow or to give the systemic blood flow. Um, Jasli, something is obstructing the... <laughs> Alright. Okay. So, uh, largely it can be divided into ductus-dependent systemic circulation uh, and also ductus-dependent pulmonary circulation. In other words, the systemic circulations would rely on the shunting to occur in order to provide the systemic perfusion whereas the ductus dependent pulmonary circulations relies on the patency of the ductus atriosus in order to supply for the pulmonary circulation. So uh, these are the list of pathology. Uh, most of them are already covered by uh, Zafira and Akila. However, I will only touch a bit about those that it has not been covered yet. So let's talk about interrupted aortic arch. So interrupted aortic arch, uh, if you look into, um, okay, look at the picture below. So we have the uh, just can you uh, point? Yeah, so uh, based on Nelson, interrupted aortic arch is actually the severest form of coarctation of the aorta. So as we learned before that, one of the uh, mechanism that is postulated is actually because of the contractile tissue that migrates abnormally into the uh, 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 from uh, outside from the uh, ductus atriosus. So this contractile tissue will then uh, cause the coarctations to occur. So, interrupted aortic arch is actually the total uh, interruptions of the aortic arch. So, it has three types, type A, type B, and also type C. So, if you look at the diagram below, the one that Jasli is pointing the pointer to, so we have we can see the PDA, and then we can see the three trunk at above. We have the brachiocephalic, we have the left common carotid, and also left subclavian artery. So, type A, which is the commonest type, there will be interruption of arch, at the level uh, distal to the origin of the left subclavian artery to the point uh, before the ductus atriosus. Okay, so that's the commonest type. Okay, ah, that, uh, sebelah sikit Jazli, sebelah kanan, kanan sikit, kanan sikit. Uh, antara left subclavian artery punya uh, distal to its origin to the, uh, just before the PDA punya origin. Okay, so that's the type A. Type B, kat tengah-tengah, is it is actually uh, originates in between the subclavian artery, left side, and also left common carotid, extend to the point, uh, I think I need to use the point, ah yes, that one, uh, just tunjuk that point, okay, uh, that one is type B, and type C will be in between the, originates in between the left common carotid, uh, brachiocephalic, and also to the point uh, proximal to the PDA punya side. So actually, uh, it is called data dependent because there's a total obliteration of the aortic arch. Hence, uh, the systemic uh, circulation will totally depends on PDA. Okay, and then we we'll move on to the next one. Let's go into the ductus dependent pulmonary circulation. So TOF already covered, pulmonary atresia, pulmonary stenosis already covered. Let's talk about single ventricle. So single ventricle is actually one of the anomaly where there is a single ventricle only, as the name suggests. So both the right and left atrium will drain into a singular ventricle. So it, it can either drain via a common uh, duct, sorry, common valve, atrial ventricular valve, or it can be draining by, by separate the uh, tricuspid and also the mitral valve into the single ventricle. So these uh, singular ventricles will then give uh, both uh, systemic and also pulmonary circulation. However, in uh, single ventricle, it is very common to be associated with either pulmonary stenosis or pulmonary atresia. Hence, uh, the, the, why it is ductal dependent is because it must rely on the patency of the ductus atriosus in order to supply the pulmonary circulations because it is very common to have pulmonary atresia and also pulmonary stenosis in such a lesion. That's why it is uh, called ductal dependent. Okay, now we look into the Epstein anomaly. So Epstein anomaly, as uh, doctor mentioned just now, uh, is actually the, it is the abnormality of the tricuspid valve. So tricuspid valve have three leaflet. So we have the anterior, posterior, and also the septal leaflet. So in this abstract anomaly, there will be apical displacement. In other words, there will be um, downward displacements of the uh, septal and also the posterior valvular leaflet. So uh, okay. So imagine that. Look at the right ventricle. Just just pointing just now. Uh, try to divide it into two. 
So why is uh, just uh, mentioned the auto mentioned just now that it will be a trialization of the right ventricle because the downward displacements of the posterior and also the uh, septal valvular leaflets will create as if the right ventricle into two segments. The above the superior one will be uh, the the one that has undergo the arterialization and the inferior one will be the remaining right ventricle. So in these such uh, cases. Uh, there will be a lack of uh, pulmonary blood flow because of three reasons. First and foremost, there will be a weak right ventricular function. There will be a severe tricuspid regurgitation because we know that the abnormalities is actually the, is at the leaflets of the tricuspid valve. And the third one will be the the one that is not displaced, the anterior leaflet is actually it will form an obstruction into the right ventricular outflow. So all in all, these three pathology, the, uh, this, uh, the the obstruction by the anterior leaflet, the reduced in right ventricular function, and also because of the tricuspid regurgitation, all in all, these three will lead to decrease in pulmonary flow. So that is why it is uh, ductal dependent because it must rely on the ductus atriosus in order to maintain the pulmonary circulation. Now let's look into the... Okay, I think that's about it. Um, yeah, line, uh, the rest of the pathology already covered by other... Uh, presenter. So uh, management wise, um, uh, this one is by Prof Ismail mentioned that uh, if you have a baby with cyanosis or with shock uh, but you don't have the modality of ECHO, just start away with uh, prostaglandin uh, E1 infusion 0 0.01 to 0 0.2 mg, uh, microgram per kg per minute. Uh, start away uh, in the presumption that these cases are doctor dependent lesion because it must rely on this patency in order to maintain viability. Uh, I think that's about it uh, with regards to my topic. I open the floor to any questions. Mm, that's very good, that's very good. Um, any questions? Uh, <clears throat> I have questions. Yes. I have a question about the data dependent. Is yes. it the data dependent only depends on the patent data choices or Anywhere like ASD or VSD? Uh, good question. To be honest, I am not sure about the answer. Uh, I open the question to doctor. Okay. Uh, doctor dependence means depending on the doctor's, uh, doctor's atrocities. Which means this child, this, this baby, without corrective surgery, they have to underwent a palliative intervention to pattern, to keep the patency of the PDA. Okay, so any of this lesion, okay, that doctor dependence, if you don't, if you, if you didn't do anything to create a ductus, a, a shine, left to right shine, at the, at the left side, bukan right side lah, right side, right side shine ni macam uh, PFO, P, uh, ASD, tapi left right shine macam uh, PDA, then they will, they will not survive lah. So doctor dependence is dependent on the PDA. So, uh, in order for them to live, you have to give them PGE until definite plan is uh, is there, corrective surgery is, is planned, or you can create another shun, for example like BT shun lah, uh, ballot to sick shun. So, the, the aim is this lesion, in general this lesion, they become doctor dependent because lack of blood supply to the pulmonary. So, they need something to bring the blood from the right side to the pulmonary. That's the principle. So anything can do. Anything can, can that can bring blood from the right side to pulmonary is what they need. So which is PDA je lah yang ada. Because VSD just connection between left and right ventricle. VSD they did not guarantee the blood supply to the to the pulmonary kan. Especially kalau the lesion is actually uh, at the pulmonary valve and above then VSD has no role, no role, from not? For example, you have pulmonary, uh, pulmonary atresia, kan? pulmonary valve atresia. Then you put VSD pun, the blood won't get to the lung, okay, from not? What you need is PDA to bypass the uh, pulmonary artery circulation. Okay, and the other option is, as, as I mentioned, is ballot to seek shan lah. Okay, BT, uh, BT shan. BT shan is, Simple petition, you've got a lot of petition. Uh, you've got modified small. Tapi petition, the principle is uh, you divert blood okay, from the uh, 
from the right right side, which is from the vein lah, or from the superior vena cava or its branches to the pulmonary artery. In common. Okay, good, 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 good. Okay, thank you, Doctor. Okay. Uh, next presentation. Hey, you guys boleh continue ke? Ke penat lah. Okay. Boleh, Doctor. Tak, tukar tak? Tak, tak, Nampak ke? Cuba. Jai Betul Betul Ini siapa ni? Ini nama? Uh. Eh, Mimi, Mimi boleh buka Mimi? Boleh, kalau tak boleh Screen share juga Apa? Saya screen share ke? Ha, boleh, boleh ke? Ha, tapi gambar je lah kejap eh Ha, ha. Lambat sikit Kira boleh ya? Okay. Okay, so aku orang tu lalu dekat tu. My name is uh, Shamimi. So I'll be presenting about the uh, scars in congenital disease. So uh, the three main scars which is uh, usually done in patient with uh, congenital disease is uh, median sternotomy scar, left thoracotomy scar and also the right thoracotomy scar. So mainly uh, for the cardiac surgery in congenital disease, uh, many of the procedure require the median sternotomy incision. Why median sternotomy is preferred? Because uh, median sternotomy offers a good exposure of the heart, pericardium, blood vessel, thymus, anterior mediastinal structure, lower trachea and carina, also the bilateral pulmonary procedure. So the median sternotomy, sternotomy scar uh, uh, is required in majority uh, case of uh, congenital disease. So what is the advantage of the median sternotomy incision? It is uh, quick to perform and also less, less pain, but the disadvantage of the median sternotomy is that uh, it has um, uh, bad co uh, cosmetic uh, because of the uh, scar we can see at the middle of the chest and also there is risk of the sternal mal malunion in the median sternotomy scar. Uh, because of the malunion, the patient uh, is uh, exposed to post-operative infection. For the median sternotomy scar, the indication, uh, the indication is that uh, in what case that we can do the median sternotomy incision, the first one is uh, tetralogy of failure. In tetralogy of failure, we can do open surgery, which is time between six months to two years old. And there is two types of surgery in tetralogy of failure, which is uh, palliative surgery or corrective surgery. For palliative surgery, uh, we do before the corrective surgery and uh, it is indicated in patient who has a complex form of tetralogy of failure. So in the palliative surgery, we do the modified Belaloc toxic shine, BT shine, in which we uh, uh, make a shine between the subclavian artery and also pulmonary artery in order to bypass uh, the heart. So in this surgery, we can e do either uh, stenotomy, which is the median sternotomy incision, uh, or we can also do the uh, left thoracotomy. But in the palliative surgery, we prefer to do uh, left thoracotomy because uh, we need to preserve the uh, sternum for the next corrective surgery later. 
So in character surgery, uh, in tetralogy of failure, we do the median sternotomy. And in tetralogy of failure, what we, we, what we do after we do the median sternotomy incision, we close the VST and also we open the pulmonary stenosis so that more blood can flow to the lung. Okay, and then the next procedure which require the median sternotomy incision is uh, transposition of uh, great artery. For the transposition of great artery, we do uh, possibly uh, then shortly after birth or within two weeks of life. And in transposition of great artery, um, we do um, uh, we switch aorta and pulmonary artery. So we switch aorta to uh, aorta and coronary artery to the left ventricle and the pulmonary artery to the right ventricle. The third one is IOT valve surgery. So in IOT valve surgery, the example is IOT stenosis. And we do open surgery in IOT stenosis where we do the midline incision in case uh, the balloon valvuloplasty is failed. So we can do the IOT valve replacement. And the next one is a uh, Fontan procedure. Uh, we also do uh, median stenotomy in frontal procedure. So in what case we do frontal procedure? Um, it is our, uh, we do in hypoplastic left heart syndrome and also trichospia atresia. So in uh, frontal procedure, we redirect uh, blood from the lower limb to the, uh, to the pulmonary artery and then to the lung. So in hypoplastic left heart syndrome, we can use the uh, right ventricle uh, to pump the blood to the to other to other body parts, and, uh, and then for the blood to pump to to be pumped to the lung, we use the fontan procedure where we create uh, inferior vena cava to the uh, pulmonary artery via the conduit. Okay, and the next one is central shunt. We also do uh, median sternotomy incision. Um, it is done whenever the blood lock and transition is failed. And the last one is pulmonary artery bending. Uh, it is uh, used in the past in case of uh, ventricular septal defect and uh, transposition of great artery. The pulmonary artery bending we do in order to reduce uh, the pulmonary blood flow so that there is no pulmonary hypertension because in VST and TGA there is uh, pulmonary hypertension. But we no longer use the pulmonary artery bending. Okay, uh, uh, next is uh, left thoracotomy scar. For the left thoracotomy scar, we can do either enterolateral, posterolateral, and also axillary. Uh, the first procedure that we can do in left thoracotomy is is that the repair of coarctation of aorta. Why repair of coarctation of aorta? We can do the left thoracotomy because as uh, uh, our pre the previous presenter said that the coarctation of aorta usually occur at the ductus atresis near the ductus atresis. So uh, at the juxta ductal region. So the ductus atresis actually uh, located at the left side of, of our thorax, uh, of our thoracic. So it is uh, suitable for us to do the left uh, thoracotomy. For the repair of coarctation of aorta, we usually do at the age of 3 to 5 years old and we do if there is significant hypertension or congestive heart failure and the type of surgery that we can do in coarctation of aorta is uh, one of the example is left subclavian flat aortoplasty. In this procedure, we take the subclavian artery and do flat at the uh, aorta at the coarctation region, at the constricted region so that the size of aorta will be uh, larger for a more blood flow can occur. Okay, and then the second one is uh, ligation of patent ductus atriosis. Why we do ligation of patent ductus atriosis? Why we do at the lateral uh, left thoracotomy? Because uh, like I mentioned before, ductus atriosis is located at the left, left side of the thorax. So uh, we do the ligation of uh, patent ductus atresis uh, during infancy and indicated if uh, there is failure of endometrial treatment to uh, close the ductus atresis or if there is sign and symptom of congestive failure. 
And the third one is Blalock and Toxic Shine. Blalock Toxic Shine. Uh, for the Blalock Toxic Shine, uh, as I mentioned before, we can do either median stenotomy in case of the tetralogy of failure, or we can also do the left trichotomy. So, Blalock and Toxic uh, Shine, we do in case of tetralogy of failure or trichospid atresia. Okay. For the right trichotomy, uh, the indication is that uh, for we can do the right trichotomy in case of pulmonary artery bending, which also can be done in left trichotomy or right blood toxic shine. For the right blood toxic shine, um, blood toxic shine can be uh, done uh, left or right. It is based on where uh, the IOT arch of a person is located because in a normal person, the IOT arch usually located at the left. But in some patients, uh, which is a normal variance, the IOT arch can uh, be at the left side. So uh, when the IOT arch is at the left side, we have to do the Belaylock and Toxic Shine at the right side. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and then for the scar at the left upper chest, uh, usually the uh, procedure that requires left upper chest incision which produce the scar, is pacemaker, uh, defibrillator, and also resynchronization device. And there's also chest drain scar located at the lower part of the sternum, which is required for pleural effusion, empyema, and also pneumothorax. Besides, there is also a minimally invasive surgery, minimally invasive scar at the uh, right upper side of the thorax, which uh, is indicated in case of Repair of sector defects, tracheospid valve surgery, IOT valve surgery, or uh, mitral valve surgery. Okay, yeah, that's all. Okay, that's quite uh, thorough. Uh, except for a few young, I think you, what you've mentioned here is very, it's quite updated lah. Uh, which, you know, updated is not the things that we do in this year because we are still outdated. Uh, so things like, for example, uh, you've mentioned uh, PA bending was no longer done. So it's actually PA bending is one of the most common uh, procedure that we've done in in Malaysia, like in Malaysia setting. Because as we mentioned, the VSD, for example, like things like VSD, uh, we usually correct it AVSD and also, and also AVSD, we correct it very early. Uh, nowadays, uh, even TGA, kan? TGA pun, uh, TGA, we correct it during the period, for example. Uh, and then, uh, VSD, we correct it within the first one year of life. Uh, so do AVSD. Uh, that's that's that, that's the idea. Okay? But in Malaysia situation, because that we are lacking of center to do it and expertise. Uh, oh, apparently cardiothoracic surgeon, pediatric pediatric cardiac surgeon is is very interesting and very they highly highly demanded. Uh, lah kalau you guys want to uh, pursue. Hello. Let's start. Okay. Hello. Ah, uh, baru dengar tak? Okay, sorry. Ah, uh, okay. So in general, dengar kan? Ah, uh, dengar dengar. Okay, in general, there's two type of surgery: palliative and also corrective surgery. Okay, palliative surgery is a surgery that you done. Uh, that you did to actually to give time before corrective surgery can be done. So these are like PA bending, uh, BT shun, uh, uh, gland, content. These are all actually palliative surgery. You know? Okay, corrective surgery like arterial switch, rastelli, uh, PDA closure, PDA like you said, these are all uh, corrective surgery. So in PA bending, okay, PA bending, uh, what we did is actually we restricted blood to the lung. As I mentioned, the the, the main problem with uh, septal defect like VSD or also connection like shine like PDA, right? the main problem is there's a lot of blood to the lung with high pressure that actually damaging the lung and this causes all the symptoms of failure. Right? 
So in order to control the symptoms of failure, to allow the child to grow, kan? to allow the child to grow better, and also pellet, to pellet the symptoms, you do PA bending. So you, you, you do PA bending at very young age, during the period, you can you can also, also do PA bending in the period. So do PA bending and give time for the child to grow uh, without any symptoms. Then after the child achieve like 10 kilo, then you can actually uh, repair the, uh, the shunt and also the septic defect. So PA bending. And then BT shunt also the same. So patient with uh, doctor dependent, uh, you can do PDA stenting. Uh, this is not invasive. PDA stenting is less invasive. It's just to femoral femoral artery lah, femoral artery or umbilical artery. So you can do PDA stenting or BT shun. BT shun is actually uh, is palliative lah to give time. Okay, gland and fontan like you mentioned, uh, fontan and gland is actually for those with single ventricle. Okay, anything with single ventricle, you do fontan and gland. Okay, Glenn, uh, actually I wrongly mentioned just now about the PT shunt. Uh, PT shunt is not connection between the vein, uh, vena cover and its branches to the pulmonary artery. PT shunt is actually from the uh, outer of the branches to the pulmonary artery. That's PT shunt. So anything, it can be subclavian artery, uh, it can be, usually we don't touch carotid artery lah. It's more than the subclavian artery, uh, right or left. It can be right or left. The decision can be right, subclavian, or left subclavian. Mm -hmm. Or central shine, like you mentioned, the central central shine in your median senatomy. Central shine is actually a big shine, but it's actually from outer directly to the uh, pulmonary artery. It's very dangerous. We rarely do it, but sometimes we have to do it. Okay. Uh, so gland is the one is the one I've mentioned earlier, which means gland is we divert the blood from the uh, vena cava. It can actually from superior, most of the time it's superior vena cover to the to the to the pulmonary artery. So we bypass because there's only one vet, one ventricle. So the role of the right ventricle will be replaced by the shunt, gland shunt. That's what we call gland shunt. And then after gland, gland is actually to prepare the heart, uh, the lung um, for a, for a high 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 amount of blood. Then we do fontan. Uh, but I think you don't need to know the detail of fontan and gland now. But in general, gland and fontan is a treatment. It's a stages. It's a staged uh, surgery for staged palliative surgery for single ventricle. Actually, one one important thing that I forgot to mention is hypoplastic left heart syndrome because you keep on mentioning a lot of time hypoplastic left heart syndrome. So hypoplastic left heart syndrome <coughs> is a condition that is usually not compatible with life. Okay. Uh, when you say hypoplastic left heart syndrome it has to be hypoplastic the whole left heart. So it's hypoplastic left ventricle, hypoplastic outer, and also the uh, hypoplastic uh, outic valve. So you call, that's when you call it's hypoplastic left heart syndrome. But if it's hypoplastic left ventricle, then it's similar to like one ventricle near ni lah. It's still, you can still palliate lah, you can do palliative surgery. But if a child diagnosed as hypoplastic left heart syndrome, we will withdraw and everything will we'll let the child die lah because the child won't survive. Okay. Uh, so there's no in general there's no surgery for Epstein, there's no surgery for hypoplastic left heart syndrome. The rest, uh, most of them got at least palliative surgery. So the the scar untuk heart pun tak banyak sangat, especially in pediatric congenital heart. You rarely see implantable. Uh, defib or the implant, implantable unless in the case of uh, complete heart block most of the time because of mother with SLE kan kalau mother with SLE with N2 low and T low positive they usually they probably can get a complete heart block so that's when you can be uh, defib usually prolonged QT syndrome severe prolonged QT syndrome uh, in baby, they may have defib. So, or refractory SVT uh, due to sick sinus syndrome, for example, then they may have defib uh, implanted. I've seen one. Yeah, I've seen two. One, one baby with defib. I think two or three baby with pacemaker lah, inserted back in HUSM. Uh, okay lah, tu cukup. Chest grain ni, you have to identify. 
And then one one the one very important scar that you've missed uh, is actually the uh, scar of angio lah. Angio angiogram ni scar. So when you examine a child uh, with heart problem with cardiac punya case lah cardiac case, you have to examine the femoral side. Okay, for a scar. Okay, because sometimes patient ni, for example, they kata, okay, this child had underwent a surgery uh, for a congenital heart disease. Okay, there's nothing with the child. There's no scar on the chest. Okay, and the child is not breathless. The child is not sinus. Then, chances are this is a PDA stenting. A PDA, uh, this is a VHD lah most of the time. Because VHD, you can do, you can use coil kan. You can do minimally invasive. Using coil lah, using coil. Atau patient with coat you can actually do NGO lah untuk create coat by using balloon similar lah, balloon balloon macam 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 patient yang SCS kan. You boleh buat balloon uh, uh, balloon apa nama dia? Yang open, you open the the stenosis area using balloon lah, ataupun stand lah. Most of the time we use stand stenting of the coat. Is most of the time now we use NGO, uh, NGO is less invasive. Uh, and also VSD, even ASD, previously, primum, uh, second term ASD, I mean, most of the time they don't, we don't use device untuk second term ASD. Why? Tadi siapa present ASD tadi? Azira, eh? Saya, Doktor. Okay. Kenapa ASD secondum kita tak guna device? What what's, what's, what's dangerous about secondum ASD? A ASD in general are not dangerous eh, compared to the rest. ASD is less dangerous. Ah. Usually ASD we correct at the age of 7, 8 years. Even 12, 13 years pun boleh correct lagi. Kalau VSD, after the age of 12 years, you tak correct, you will, you will not correct. You cannot correct anymore because they will start to develop hormonal hypertension and it started to become a semenger lah soon. So VSD you correct very early, usually at the age of in Malaysia setting two three years old, but uh, actually recommended is one year old. Tapi in Malaysia biasanya two three years old lah. Uh, tapi ASD you can correct later, but most ASD you use uh, you you need to operate rather than using uh, coil. Okay, because especially secondum ASD. So what? What important structure are there? in ASD. Very near to ASD. It's the most important structure in the heart. Bundle of his? SA not? Hmm. SA not. <laughs> so, ASD. Okay. Uh, a lot of the heart, structural heart defect, they don't have problem with conduction. Except mm -hmm. ASD. Okay. Mm -hmm. ASD, especially ASD secundum, they, a lot of time, they presented uh, the child presented with syncopal or syncopal attack ataupun presented with uh, palpitation then bila buat echo, noted ada ASD so ASD, a lot of ASD they are asymptomatic so dia tak ada, they, they don't they, they don't develop failure tapi sometimes they can get uh, arrhythmia okay, that's why most center, they don't do device closure uh, device closure of ASD tapi in Kelantan, in USM and NHRPZ it's the largest center in the world that do device closure of ASD. Okay. Uh, so actually Malaysia is okay, quite good untuk in terms of cardiac punya surgery in pediatric Malaysia is quite good. Uh, tu dah. Rasa tu cukup. Anything else to ask? Rasa pun. Um, um, doctor. Sorry. Have you like? Uh, it's okay. Yes. Uh-huh. Uh, Doctor, uh, um, uh. my question will be with regards to hypoplastic left syndrome, left heart syndrome. Uh. Um, what about the role of Norwood procedure, Doctor? Hmm, Norwood, eh? Uh, Norwood is a stages procedure. It's a stage procedure, but it's very high risk. It's very and people nowadays, less people. I mean, we rarely do Norwood lah. Actually, I tapna dengar any of my baby do Norwood. Because it's very high risk. Uh, it's a stage procedure juga. Uh, and a lot of time, baby with hypoplastic heart syndrome ni, it's very difficult to treat in each. Because they end up, uh, they end up develop. By the time 
No, they are dark tasting. So you give, uh, they rely on PGE. But even though with PGE pun, it won't correct their hypoxia much. Because they are hypoplastic. The left ventricle is not functioning. So more of them usually died very early. Lah. Uh, because com the main complication they get is uh, they get shock, cardiogenic shock, kan? cardiogenic shock, heart failure. And on top of that, they also got, uh, they develop uh, kidney failure lah, a lot. Because when you've got reduced output, uh, when you've got a uh, problem with your left ventricular output, kan, the main the main organ, the whole the whole body organ down your waist uh, is compromised, lah, especially your liver and also your kidney. So a lot of time, this baby memang, memang end up ESR, um, CKD, liver failure, renal failure, and tak sempat lah buat no word. So, nanti lah. Okay, okay, okay. Ada soal man? I'm sorry, doctor. I would like to hmm. clarify. Usually kalau blood toxic shunt, huh. is it like it must be from either right posterior lateral or it can be from also median sternotomy because uh, yes. I saw there's like variation in the liver image. Yes, uh, because it's, uh, as I mentioned, uh, BT shunt kan, BT shunt is a connection between the branch of outer, okay, the branch of your outer lah. Usually, mainly we take the subclavian artery because that's, that's the least useful and you've got collateral lah to replace it. Uh, you, and then you shunt it to the uh, pulmonary artery. So that's the principle. Eh? BT shunt is from left outflow to the right outflow. So they connect uh, our town branch dengan pulmonary artery. Connect to the lung. So it can be any of the branches. Okay, so kalau you guna left subclavian artery, so you boleh buat left uh, trochotomy lah. No? Kalau you guna right subclavian artery, you guna lah right trochotomy. You buat lah right trochotomy. Tapi if this fail, especially contoh macam patient ni memang ada most of the time, syndromic baby lah. Syndromic baby memang ada vascular dia pun not very good. Uh, even pulmonary artery dia maybe memang susah lah. Kalau susah, then uh, worst come to worst, you kena buat media stenotomy, stenotomy and you connect the aorta using a shunt, kan? Conduit. You build a conduit. So, BT shunt ni, BT shunt ni zam, dulunya, dulunya BT shunt is actually you just cut the subclavian artery and fix it to the pulmonary artery. Okay, so you use the subclavian artery straight to the pulmonary artery. But nowadays, we use conduit, which means you cut the subclavian artery, you tak cut pun subclavian artery tu. You just put a conduit, macam macam pipe kan. In hmm. between, you buat lubang dekat subclavian artery tu, you fix it there, and then they, at the the other end, you fix uh, to the pulmonary artery. The, the uh, conduit is from the pulmonary artery to doctor? No. Uh, per, uh, so the conduit is something yang usually made of apa material macam-macam material lah. I pun tak ingat. Tak sure material. Oh, PPC it's, lah. it's not from the it's not no. from the patient itself lah. No, it's not organic lah. It's not organic. Oh. It's, uh, usually it's uh, foreign material. And then you uh, you connect the two lah. Pulmonary artery and also the subclavian artery. Oh, okay. Alright. Thank you. Okay, that's, that's what we call modified petition. I think everywhere you go now, they use modified petition. They don't, they really, because you don't want to compromise the the original artery lah. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay, comment. Okay, good, good. Any other questions ke? Eh, you guys boleh larat lagi ke ni? Kalau tak larat, then kita ni lah, postpone. Maybe next time kot. Ada banyak lagi ke? Kalau banyak lagi, uh, sekejap eh, let's Ada lagi sekejap. Satu, dua, tiga, empat. Hmm, banyak lagi. Okay. I suggest uh, kita postpone for now. Uh, maybe we can have another session. You guys decide lah when uh, to continue the rest. Uh, Bila lah. Esok pun boleh. Esok tapi uh, because tonight I'm going to travel to Kelantan. So, esok eh, esok, esok. 
Hmm, esok boleh kot. Esok atau, I mean during the weekend lah. During the weekend ataupun Sunday pun I'm quite free. Monday, when I say I'm quite free most of the time lah. Because my, I punya kerja sekarang is teaching and also do research. So I'm doing my proposal at the moment. So, but the rest of the time kalau I tak ada class, I memang quite free. So you, kalau you nak lah, then you guys decide. And then arrange another time for the, the other, for presentation. Because I'm going to also present the, the management of that spell kan. That's one of the ILOs. Mm. Uh, okay, that's all right. That's all right. That's all right. That's all So, okay, okay, okay I'll still do that. Okay, you guys have to do that. Okay, jadi pos pada datang. Pos pun eh? Okay, jadi. Ah, cuma jauh. Ada few things I want to mention here. Ah, uh, in general kan? Ah, uh, in general. Ah, uh, congenital heart disease. We are talking about structural heart disease kan? Okay, so congenital heart disease can be divided into uh, synotic and asynotic. Okay, or it can be divided, the synotic usually the uh, critical synotic heart, uh, complex synotic heart ataupun complex synotic heart. Complex synotic heart means synotic heart disease that have to be corrected within the first year of life. That's what you call complex synotic heart. Okay, faham? Uh, yang non-complex ni, you can wait lah. You can do palliative surgery and you can wait. And a lot of this, the problem with heart, the problem with heart, heart disease, especially especially complex anti heart disease, is they don't appear at birth. Okay, a lot of heart disease they don't appear at birth. Okay, those septal defect kan, they don't appear at birth. You won't detect them at birth unless you do echo. Atau because, uh, for example, uh, PDA kan, you won't hear murmur, uh, at at birth. Okay, murmur you won't hear at birth. The only murmur that you can hear at birth are usually murmur of the valve punya problem. Um, kalau ada valve punya problem macam TF, uh, TOF, uh, you boleh dengar murmur at birth. Because dia ada PS. Okay, kalau patient ni ada uh, autic stenosis, ada mitral regurge, you dengar murmur at birth. Tapi any ada murmur kan, macam DSD punya murmur, ASD punya murmur, PDA punya murmur, you won't hear this murmur at birth. Okay, and all the synotic heart, most of the time they don't get cyanose until the PDA close. Okay, because PDA will always uh, helps uh, to divert blood to the lung kan. So rarely divert uh, cyanose lah. Okay, lepas tu, tu satu. Second is, uh, so a lot of these children, a lot of these baby, they will appear, those with a scientific heart, much septic defect, they will appear at the age of four to six weeks. Tahu kan? Because uh, that's when the time of pulmonary pressure reduce. So a lot of them, the symptoms simple je. Symptoms of heart disease is, the main symptom is the sinus ataupun breathless. Ataupun mati ataupun syncope lah. Mati syncope atau palpitation. Tapi in general congenital heart disease, the main presentation is failure symptoms ataupun sinusis. Okay. Kalau those yang without synotic heart, asynotic heart disease, they will only get failure symptoms if the significant blood of amount of blood, uh, I mean delivered to the lung. Okay, faham tak? Bila banyak sangat blood dalam lung, baru dia orang jadi breathless. Kan I mentioned just now kan? Bila sikit blood dalam lung, dia tak breathless lah. Okay. So, because baby dia born dengan pulmonary hypertension, these are protective to the lung. So, tak banyak darah boleh pergi kat lung. But because dia ada pulmonary hypertension. Tapi as, as as the baby grows, between 4 to 6 weeks, this is when the pulmonary hypertension will resolve. I mean, the will reduce to the normal normal amount lah. Macam normal value to like adultnya pulmonary hypertension, pulmonary pressure. So, this is when they've got the failure symptoms. Okay, faham kan? So, those asynthetic heart, they usually presented at between four to six weeks, and those yang synotic heart, they usually presented after AS, after PDA closure, fully usually about one week of life. For four five days to one week of life. 
Okay. Uh, usually that time lah. And kalau dia datang lambat lagi, dia akan datang dengan sama ada datang dengan death, death ataupun datang dengan cardiogenic shock ataupun dia datang dengan hypersensitive spell. Macam TOF kan? TOF most of time kita diagnose TOF at the age of once dia aktif. Bila dia aktif, uh, dia akan dapatlah hypersensitive, hypersensitive spell. That is when you diagnose TOF. Because it's very difficult to, to recognize sinusis. The sinusis is not easy to recognize. Huh? Okay. Itu cukup. Ada last soalan? Before we stop. Uh, sorry Doktor, yang for yang postpone class tu is it okay for next week Doktor? Because oh, this weekend ada macam prime. Oh okay okay. Kalau next week jom. Uh, sekejap ni. Next week on the 21st. Okay tak ada apa-apa. Uh, 22nd I kelas pagi. So 22nd petang boleh lah. 22nd petang boleh. Petang. 23rd, I'm free the whole day. Yeah. 23rd tu I'm at university tapi I rasa I free je. So 24th, memang I full. Ah, 24th je yang memang penuh. 22nd petang free. Dengan dress semua tak ada penuh. 22nd oh. petang dengan 23rd eh? Ya, oh. Dengan 25th, 26th. Okay. So nanti you guys uh, discuss and decide lah. Okay, alright. Okay. Okay, uh, okay, kita tanggung dengan Tasbih Kafara. Thanks for coming. Saya akan tulis lagi tu. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Adam. Kamu ada? Kamu lagi?